What's wrong with the knee? Nothing. Bold injury. Yeah. Was that uh, during your squat? or after? That was during a squat. Oh, that was during a squat? It's on YouTube. Is that at Nationals? Cohen injury. It was at the Mountaineer Classic. Oh, shit. I set up too fast, so my right leg was out farther than my left, and when I went down, it buckled in and snapped my patellar tendon in half. Yeah, luckily, like, I grew up with all these old school guys at Ernie Francis' gym. Yeah. Oh. So they, they had taught me how to dump a bar. If I didn't dump the bar, the bar would have just crushed me. That's yeah. the wisdom of the old guys back then. Yes. The old guy, well, they set the stage for everyone else. So based on all the stupid shit they did, we learned off of, and it just keeps going. How important do you think it is for the new lifter today to learn about kind of just the history, a little bit of a... It's just any type of history, whether it's U.S. history or world history or whatever, you have to know how something started to get better. So if you don't know the history of the sport, you don't know what they did back then and how they did it and why, and then you don't get to see how it developed over time to learn you to based off that. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. You have any questions? Of course not. She doesn't talk. She does. She talks to me, not to you. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of hits for that. That's good. Good whatever hits. Works. Yeah, whatever works. It's it's pretty easy when you just it's pretty easy when you just don't care anymore. <laughs> Did you ever care? Other what's, than the what's barbell. The, book, the art of not giving a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> When you got a low bar squat, you feel that? Now you're locked in. And that's, that's what makes your upper and lower body locked in together so it works as one piece. If you don't have that locked in, that's when you see guys tip. Like, a, like, like when you hit the bottom, all of a sudden someone will go like this and then come up. It's because they their core and their lower lats aren't locked in. Just keep your chin neutral, but keep this up high right here. There you go. Now your lats lock in. Your first move out of the out of the hole is drive your back into the bar straight up. Your legs are gonna push automatically. There. See if your if your back doesn't push against the bar and your legs don't push down, this does not move. This is like a hinge. So both have to go like this in order for your hips to, to work. Thank you. Question, how long do you think it takes on average for the power lifter to create a new habit in terms of changing technique? Like that, they can learn it like that, but to adapt it to themselves, it's a it's a little bit of a new pattern. So like sometimes when I switch someone to high bar to low bar, or, or their stance a little bit, um, it feels really weird, but the weight goes up really fast. Right. Because you're using more of what you're supposed to. So then it takes, just a, a couple weeks for your brain to realize that this is a good new pattern. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you broke it, you pay it, you buy it. <laughs> he owes me a new one. I no, didn't see no that. you didn't. It's been broken. <laughs> you take that. <laughs> Open up and then sit back on your body. Yeah, you'll get better depth too. Okay. Get really tight. Feel this? Yeah. Relax your hand. Feel that? See yeah. how loose your body gets? Yeah. If you're not squeezing a bar, it won't make you tight. Just by squeezing, what it does is it sets up tightness here, bicep, tricep, shoulder, upper back, just by being able to squeeze. Yeah. So no matter what you do, squeeze. And when you go over the top of the bar like that, watch, just watch my shoulder. See it here? Now watch this. See this? Yeah. And the elbow high and the shoulder tip forward? Yeah. Well, you can't lock in your upper back and everything you're going to do when you get heavy is going to draw you forward. Okay. What I say is everyone yeah. can lift lightweight with that technique. It's easy. <laughs> you're not wrong. If you don't open this up, you'll just go like this and your hip flexors lock up. Okay. So when your hip flexors lock up, your hips can't rotate in the socket anymore and it pitches you forward. Hip flexors, you mean here? Yes. So that's why I want this to open first. This opens here, okay. right back, and just sit, and it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> the 
You still sit back a little bit more. Okay. Break your butt backwards and then straight down. There. That's better. You know what? I, I think you could close in your stance in a little bit. You're trying to go a little bit wide. Now see, let me see how low you can go. Lower, lower. There you go. <laughs> it actually got better the lower you went. Oh. Okay. The higher you went, it pitched you more forward. So you really got to just look. When you open up, you push your butt back. Once you push your butt back, you don't have to push it back anymore. You can just drop straight down. Okay. When you start pushing it back more, the only thing that goes lower is your chest. Just get your, if you can, tweak your elbows forward. Yes, now lock this. But keep your elbows forward. That's, that's what you want. If you're going to go that high, that's going to leave me away with it. Okay. Can you be here? Yes, if your elbows come up, then your shoulders pitch forward. And with heavy weight, it'll make you fall forward right away. And usually a close grip, closer grip than this? I mean, right now it looks fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have really bad, like, um, tendonitis in my elbows, uh, and that's why I was switching to wider grip and after. Yeah. How that looked was fine. The only problem was your elbows. And you see, when you change that, and it changes the direction here, see if, you're, if your shoulders pitch forward with heavy weight, it will make you go like this. But if you try to tighten your back up with your elbows forward. Look. No, you can't. <laughs> with, with, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you lock your upper back here. But when you pull your elbows down, your lower lats are yeah. which is the most important. That's the only thing that's connecting your whole upper body and your whole lower body. If that's not tight, you'll fall forward. That in your abs. Pull your elbows down. There. Stir the chin up, and then open up your groin. There. Good. Keep your core a lot tighter on the bottom. That belt, that belt is not your core. <laughs> don't let your chin drop and don't let your sternum drop. No, I, I look. Keep your, keep it up. Right there. Better. Now you have something to push off of. If you lean forward, you can't push off your back. Good. I was a little bit more forward. Right there. Good. Watch this. I'm gonna hit you right now. Are you ready? Brace it. That's a brace. That's a simple. That's a salt. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't make it. Don't make You're it in California now. Look, if you try to push against your belt, watch my lower back. See how it goes in? We don't want that. Okay. We don't want that. that. Okay. Just squeeze. If you squeeze it tight, nature will take care of everything else. Right. Good. Keep your elbows a little more forward. Right there. Now squeeze your lats in. Abs tight, abs tight, and then use your back down the bottom. That's tight. Open up earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. You're relaxing yourself on the bottom. Yeah. You're relaxing your core on the bottom, especially. Oh, it's, it's one of those common things. As soon as you, you hit the bottom, everything relaxes, then you try to push off. Keep it tighter here on the way down. Okay. Squeeze the bar tight. Stir the chin. Open. There you go. Use your ass out of the hole. So squeeze it tight. Good. A little lower. That's better. Keep your elbows a little bit lower. And stir them up and chin, 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 chin. There you go. Office. Make it move off out of the hole. Do one more. 
Now this this time, I want you to hit it a lot faster. Hit the pole faster? Yes. Low, now lower. One more. Bury it. There. That one felt the best probably. It did. Look it did. It did. Yeah. Really. Full range of motion so your hips get free. Okay. Way better. The biggest uh, mistake lifters make on the squat that you see most often? It's all the setup. I said it on you know, you know Elite FTS podcast with Dave Tate. About 90% of lifts are missed on the very setup. If the setup is off, you can't all of a sudden correct everything with a big heavy load on your back like that. Cool. That looks good. It looks like it feels good too. Now it does. There's a lot of the similarities with everyone's squats as far as what's just slightly off. But slightly off, when you correct it, has a domino effect on everything else. So if you don't open up your hips, your hip flexors lock in, your hips don't rotate, you don't use as much butt and hamstring, it pitches you forward, so you see on what, what happens. So from the very start, if you set it up right, usually you have a much better chance of finishing. Right when you hit, right when you jump out of the hole, you're relaxing for a second. Don't relax them. Tight, 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 tight. There, look at that. You can feel different. Yes. Yeah. Last one was awful. Yeah. I, uh, when I was in Australia, I had talked to KK, and do you remember the, the famous F3 dentist who rips his single off? Of course. And says that line? Yes. I gave him that line where I built my own fucking belt. No shit. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. There was a, uh, a Ukrainian guy named Yuri Spinoff, who I saw squat 947 with no belt. And I said, why don't you wear a belt? He said, I build my own belt. So, in, in kind of segwaying yeah, so segue into that. He was doing straight leg sit-ups with a bar with 275 across here and coming all the way up and all the way down. That works your whole core. You just yeah. answered my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Any other ways of uh, strengthening the brace there, in the core? There is. I mean, look at, uh, look at the suitcase carries or the one-arm holds that I do. All that stuff, if it if your body isn't working in sync, it will die. It would, will just crumble. Would it benefit being that you're upright because you're standing upright in the squat to have that load and that working on the brace versus doing an ab, an ab crunch? Um, an ab crunch will really do it. Yeah. I mean, it's good to be able to identify how to use your abs. Right. But how to use your abs during a crunch and how to use your abs and brace on this are two different things. And the core isn't just a couple pretty abs. It goes down here and all the way around. So other exercises have to balance that out to make it work. It would be like you know, doing a concentration curl and saying it's gonna help my bench or my pull-ups. It's not really gonna do anything. Right. It so looks pretty. So basically more sports specific for the, well, more movement specific. Yeah, yes, more, more movement specific. Uh, being athletic is a plus. When you start doing, you losing your athleticism and become one dimensional, which is probably what happened to me near the end, in your quest to build bigger weights, you get lazy. Yeah. Um, I probably would have been a little bit healthier and lasted longer. Stay back on it. There you go, now just straight down. Nice squat, nice squat. Don't move. Yes. That's out there. That's when you need to use that. Yeah. I had some tomorrow when I got him. I was in there. Oh my god. It took the. It was at a world championship. It took all the skin off the back of my neck. Oh. And then I, that was the second attempt. Then I had to go back and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> all I ended up with when you when you screw when you screw up that bad, it tends to tends to make you have the next one really perfect. Yeah. Elbows down. Sternum and abs. Good. Holding out. Elbows forward, sternum and abs. Lock your abs. Lock them, lock them, lock them. Good. <laughs> lock them. Come on, one more, you got this. Same way. This one, use your back into it. Come on, let's go. 
Yeah. Unless you the last one the elbows came up high. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> that's what, what you're talking control. about. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot is your intent. What you're doing a lot of times is you go down and you're saying, let me see how this feels. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's too late. So this what is so this is this is how you guys are pushing. It yeah. looks like it. Now an actual yeah. push, that's the difference. So you gotta go after it in a very holistic, aggressive manner for it to go up. Okay. If you just, just think, I wanna see how this feels, you lose it already. There you go. Start them in half, squeeze it. Nice takeoff. Now let me see how open and sit. Kill it. Nice one. A little bit open. Because you got the bar a little higher, that's going to make you sit forward. Always with everything. But now that you know that, it's like, okay, I got to get all the muscles around my scapula stronger and get my abs stronger. Right. If you're going to continue with that style. How, do, how would you have a lifter deal with adversity? Meaning, the weight's so heavy, they don't believe in themselves, or they think that they can't get the weight just because they visually see three plates on the, on a lot the bar. Of times what happens is it's because they went from here in a training cycle to here and skipped all these steps in here. So the weight feels heavy. They didn't put in enough work to build the confidence all the way through to be able to do it. You think adversity is important? It's, 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 it's not adversity. It's sticking to the right training routine. There we go. You're, if, if it's adversity, you created a bad adversity. I mean, having to go to work every day and then come in a gym, that's a little more adversity than <laughs> actually having the bar on your back. We love this. Everyone that's here loves it. So it should be easy. Because you want to be able to do it. You just have to set it up correctly at the beginning so there's a start here and there's a start finish. And all this builds on week by week by week to get you to there. What happens is a lot of people try to take too big a step and they miss these training weights that build everything that's getting them stronger. Everything you do should have a purpose in the gym. So, I didn't do an exercise that didn't have a purpose. So basically doing the right accessories to get you where you need to get to, so yeah. you, you, that are complementary to the to the movement. Yeah, and it, it has to be able to transfer over. Like front squats didn't work for me, but a high bar close stand squat all off season worked for me because my strength was from here to here, but I didn't have as strong a quads. So a, a high bar closer stand squat would transfer over more than a front squat for me. And Amelia likes everything to do with the butt. Yep. But don't let this go. Pick that up to the bar. Yes. Good. This sets your shoulders and will set your back tight. Just by that, so you don't have to think about all the other shit. Just by doing that, watch everything how you want it. What you say for doing is push it out. Pick your sternum up and pick your right towards the bar and just squeeze it. Put your fingerprints in the bar. That's all I want you to squeeze it. Yeah. It's just a colossal contraction. Okay. Yeah. Keep your elbows in just a little bit. There. Good. I'm going to stop on this box. All right. This is the only one You have to tuck your elbows more. You don't want to just your elbows, pull them in. Pick your sternum up and pull your elbows in. There you go. Ah, you can't yeah. relax on the bottom. You see everything relaxed? Yeah. Keep that sternum way up high and keep your abs tight. Sternum up, keep it tight. That's so getting better. Sternum up. You see how it bounces on the bottom like that? That means you're getting loose. Yes. Pick your sternum up as high as you can. 
and leave it there. Now, what that does is it, it sets your shoulders automatically underneath you and locks up your back. So now just touch your elbows. Yep. That's all you need. Kind of go fast? Yeah. Watch this. You don't go like this, you go. That means you loosen up on the bottom. At the bottom. Yeah. So keep this up as high as you can. Yeah. Yep. And just pull the weight down to you. And then press. Boom. Good. Good on top. Yeah. Do you go a hair wider when you grip? Good. You hit it up a tiny bit higher. Yes. Yeah. Keep it with me. Keep that up as high as you can on the way down to the bar. So push your sternum up the bar. That's what I want. Now you're tightening it up. Push the sternum up. Yeah. Because look, when you, when you pick your sternum up, watch my shoulder. See what it does? It locks your back in and keeps your shoulders underneath you. Yeah. All you gotta do yourself is squeeze the bar and keep your make sure your elbows don't fly out. If your elbows fly out, your back flattens and your sternum drops. Good. That looks better hitting here. <laughs> what about leg drive? How important is leg drive in the bench? Is it? For some people it's good. For some people the legs just have to be stable so the whole body doesn't move. I wasn't really a leg drive person. Um, I was more, if, if I could, I had to put plates underneath my feet. Because I, I had to the legs. Um, so as long as they were tight and sturdy, I could still drive. If they're too loose, you can't drive from your legs. But you'll have no stability in your upper body either. If this is loose, everything can move. So just making sure your, your feet are set. As they say, without stability, there is no strength. Perfect. It's good. Your technique on almost everything is really good. It's, it's just, you gotta just throw a couple of hairs on your ball. <laughs> because you're way stronger than you know. You just have been holding back for some reason. Yeah. Your, your technique looks great. Just want to show you up today, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. I said nice bench before he even touched the bottom because how you set up and how you start to go down was perfect. So there's no reason to miss. So how come sometimes it won't come up? Because you're down. Either chest cave or your elbows cave. For you, it's your elbows come out. Look, if you keep your sternum up, your chest can't cave. And if you let your sternum down, watch the elbows. See that? Yeah. So if this drop, it, it has that, that one cue for squat bench and deadlift. It has a domino effect on everything. You know, it's kind of mental for me because I pick up that bar and it starts, I start down and about the time I pick it up, I'm like, holy crap, how am I ever going to do this? That's because you set up wrong when you took it off. You got to set that sternum up and screw the bar before you even take it off. You can't just all of a sudden go, okay, now I'll try to do this with a bunch of weight on my, in my hand. It doesn't work that way. You can't get in the same position. You say, stop starting to drop. Set up right and you get yourself in a position to finish right. Good. Now, if you go flat foot, just pick your big toe up in your shoe. And squeeze the bar tight. Start up, start up up high. Drive your heel into the floor. Sada, I hit you. Ah, you see that now when you relax? Good. Good. Nice. How important is it the lift off on the setup once the lifter gets to their heavy weight or their actual sets or even it's, in competition? It's everything. It's that same thing. How you start is how you finish. If you take it off too much by yourself, you'll be like this 
and you're out of position. Try to readjust and get tight again. If you have a good handoff guy, he just sets it where it's like, oh, and it's perfect. It's like you don't use lose anything. You don't have to try to reset your setup after you get a handoff. So that I don't have to change my setup. That's great. Okay. 
No, more reps. <laughs> you're, you're, you're never going to have a breakdown of technique with light weight. So when you feel it break down with heavy weight, you go back down and you do the reps necessary to build. That's very common with women. You can do like 100 reps at 95 pounds and you put on 100 and you do two. <laughs> that I've is, seen that so many times. Even though we, we all have the same build, there's little insertions in women that aren't as tight as in men. So you, there's little assistance work, dips, flies, pull-ups that you guys got to do more of that guys don't need. Don't Tuck your elbows. This is the only thing I want you to work on. See how this moves around a lot? That means look at how your upper body is. It can, it can, it can move and get relaxed. So this is, it has to be more stable. So okay. find a way, I don't care what stance you have to take, find a way that locks your glutes in tighter so everything doesn't move down there. Okay. Thank you. Preference with sumo, you personally, or conventional? Or whatever makes you look the most weight. Um, I like doing both because I didn't want to be weak. And actually, like a definitely conventional helped my sumo more than any other way. Right, stop right there. Did you stir them up? Stir them up? There you go. Now push and pull it in your balls. Yeah. Push your butt in the balls? No. Push it in and pull the bar in your balls. Pull the bar in. Alright, do one more. Stop underneath your knees. Stop. Look where you're bent over. Now put your sternum up. And now push it forward. See that? You're over the bar to me. Give yourself time when you grab the bar to pull the slack out and wiggle yourself into a better position. You're not doing that at the start. So what happens is when you get to here, instead of being in this position, you're in this position. Use your hips earlier. So up and then right into your balls. There you go. Much better. Sternum, chin up. Use your hips earlier. There. Hips, good. There you go. Not bad. Put your, put your grip in a little bit. Now extend upwards with your sternum and chin. Good. Right there. Up and in. Good. Get a, take a little more slack out of the bar to get some tension. So your quads activate. Because your first your first move isn't here, it's here. So okay. it goes right back in your hamstrings because you didn't you didn't get ready to push your quads enough. Okay. Kind of like pre-activate them. Sorry. So if you pull the slack out, pull the, when you pull the slack out, wiggle in closer and get your sternum up. The bar will almost come off the ground by itself. Nice lift. Use your hips earlier, that's all. Use them earlier, you're waiting, you're waiting till the bar's up here before you're using your hips. 
think here to use your hips. Do this too. See how far you're starting with the bar out in front of you? Kind of rock and then pull it in and then go. So you're, you're out there, kind of get set and then pull the bar in and go. Back. There you go. Ab wheels, planks? Uh, planks are good for more, uh, a little bit of stability. No, they don't build as much muscle. I like really light uh, straight leg sit-ups with my arms and back of me extended. With, right. with, and when you come up, you've got to leave them in back. You can't pull them up. So uh, it works everything. I guess I'll start doing those. Yeah, they're not as fun. I'll make you try and do them afterwards. Okay. He'll make you. <laughs> yeah, I have no choice. Well, it's not really Basically, it's not even a, yeah. No, I got that part. One clear. A little bit right from there. Point your toes out. No, look, look. Just go like this. There you go. Now go. Up and in. Use your quads. Up, in. Good. Yes. If you, if you keep your feet too straight a lot of times, your hips lock out way too high. Okay. Here we go. Up and push. They work on getting their strength so much and their weaknesses didn't come up, so look at the gap. So now all of a sudden what happens is about three quarters of the way through a training cycle, because you have these inherent weaknesses that you never got better, you either have a breakdown of technique in your miss or you're just not strong enough because your weaknesses are too great. And what do people usually say? This routine sucks. No, you suck because you didn't do it. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to suck. Right. I really don't want to suck. No, <laughs> no sucking. Only on purpose sucking. Not actually. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. And you suck. And I suck well. <laughs> How important is it on the deadlift to control the weight coming down? You have to control it on the way down to be in a position to do it on the way up. If you, unless you're doing singles, like you just said, there's no reason to have a problem setting up. You shouldn't relax and then try to set up again. It's, you're not, reinforcing a perfect pattern because when you're doing reps and you let it down there's a certain amount of fatigue that when you start getting tired you can't get in the same position again but if you let it down slower and in control you can set yourself to be in the right position for somebody that needs to develop explosiveness how would you go about it? more reps more reps lighter weight, lighter weight yep. and, then just... and practice being explosive you can't be you can theoretically practice being explosive with heavy weight by mentally trying to make it move. But it, it doesn't move the same way and it pulls you out of position that it kind of can screw you up at the same time. So it has to be a doable thing. Turn up, up, in. You're locking out a little bit too forward on your toes. And you got up to a point, you got to push it through and sit back a little bit. So your hips go forward. Okay. If not, you're going to be over the bar. You're a little bit over the bar on your sumo. Okay. And that's not that hard to Other than that, it's fine. But here's the thing. If that one thing will make you miss a heavy weight, then it matters Yes, it lot. matters a lot. Yeah. If you had to sum it up, what would be the biggest takeaway for whether you're a beginner, intermediate, elite lifter to stay successful in the sport, longevity-wise? Technique and be realistic with your goals. 
because then your training is set up realistically. All my training was set up and it had to be doable. So when I wrote out a routine, I'd write it out five, six, ten times until I knew every week was building upon the next that would get me to the top that I wanted. But the top that I wanted, that number, was realistic. If I put it a little bit too far ahead, then all the numbers I made up week by week would be shit. It wouldn't get me there. Were there ever any lifters or any other competitors you ever looked to compete against or was it only always about how can I improve at this next meet? It was meet? only about my total. I didn't worry about anybody. I just worried about me. Enjoy it more. When you start looking to try to go after people, you try to go after numbers that may not be realistic yet. So you might skip a step and then you fuck up. How was your, I guess if you would say rivalry as you will with Captain Kirk in the back, we, backstage? We um, behind. Kirk used my routine to up his game. That's when Kirk got really strong. The end of our routine was a little different where he liked to, he was a little crazier. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> he would like to do some more heavier singles near the end where I would stop on double. But we used to joke, like, you know, he was in 275, I was in 220. And when, at, at a meet, um, at the Nationals, I told 2402 or whatever, at 220. And he, I missed a 990 squat or something, and he missed 1,003. And he just said, ha ha, I missed more than you. Yes. So he could always, he could usually out squat me to meet. I would beat him at the bench and I'd kill him in the bed. But we were different weight classes. But it was fun to do because then it kept us motivated and training. So it was a lot more positive than. Yeah, oh, oh there's no negative. Yeah. yeah. See, my first meet was. 1980, get this, I was a really light 165 pounder, like a little over 150. The racks didn't go low enough, so they had to set the bar on me before, so it took me three tries to get my first squat. I did a, a 485 squat, a 295 bench, and a 495 deadlift in my first one. Wow. And by 1983 at the Nationals, weighing 166, because I missed weight, uh, I squatted 699 and three quarters. I was still 19. And then I squatted 800, actually oh, barely over a year more than that. In the next Nationals, I squatted 782. I came up with 804, but they said I was a little high. So it wasn't that much. I just started growing like a baby. You gotta jump in. Look, just, just do a tiny little short little training cycle. And don't go there saying, oh, I'm gonna win. Just go there and focus on, I want to try to get, go nine for nine and make these little numbers. Even if you have a bunch left, you will have an absolute riot. Because look at the crowd here. You guys, I mean, everyone gets along so fun and so well at a powerlifting meet. And so, yeah, I would just jump in and have fun. you got to make it fun. If, you're never going to do anything well unless it's fun. If you're waiting to, you can know that you can win, that's just stupid. Okay. I knew my hip was I knew my hip was going and then I, I knew that there was no way I could be the old me again so I didn't want to be more of a tragedy than a champ going out on top do you think is for everybody no <laughs> whatever turns you on just do something well, I mean, have you ever come across a lifter and it, I don't know for whatever reason like not built or, or, or there, mostly I see that with someone like in a, a, a deadlift. Sure. Um, it all depends whether they have to stick their fortitude or not, if they can stick it out. Because it's always going to be a hard lift. They just got to figure out how they can get better. <laughs> no, thank you guys for coming out. I mean, this is easy for me because I get to meet cool people and I love teaching. And you guys came here because you want to get better, and that's all I ask. Not just get better for a long period of time, you're really fucking good. You can take some picks. Want to get a big pick with all of us? <laughs>